What's going on my Ronin family? Elijah here back with another video and today I have a very special guest. Joining me is Big Sword from the Aperon team. Thanks so much for being on the channel. Uh, yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, really happy to be here and talk about the game. I know that you've been really helpful in getting me started in the game and I'm also aware that Aperon is very complex to jump into. So today we're going to break it down piece by piece in how to get started in PvP and we're going to probably do multiple videos like this as things progress. A lot of you might have seen posts about Aperon on Twitter. Perhaps you've seen the fact that 1437 just won phase two of the closed beta leaderboard or maybe you've seen that I am posting a whole lot right now about Aperon because I'm really 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 enjoying the gameplay getting a pretty sick kill here in this 1v1 match and I also finished in the top 20 of the leaderboard and today we're going to be talking about free to play planets where you don't have to invest any money but you can still begin learning the game and in a week from now you're actually going to be able to earn play to earn airdrop points for the upcoming APRS token which is Aperon's native governing token but in case you don't know I actually do already have two other Aperon videos on my YouTube channel and one talks a little bit about planets and shopping if you want to go buy your own. So first, before anything else, join the app or on Discord. And if you're wanting to play PvP, you also have to join the Discord and go to PvP Official, where you can download the latest patch. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we start building out the skill tree on this planet? Yeah, actually, I mean, the leaderboard just ended, but even though the leaderboard's over, you guys can actually still play the game and, and practice. There aren't actually any rewards right now, but if you guys get to hang up the game, you're basically just going to be ahead of the curve once the, the build launches on the Epic Game Store on February 28th. So it sounds like we're just getting closer and closer to the like official launch of the competitive realm of, of PvP. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, Season 3 is just around the corner. The Epic Game Store build is going to be the open beta, so anyone can try. Free to play. You don't need a wallet. You can play as a guest. Perfect. So without further ado, when you guys download this game client from the Discord, make sure you go in your settings, choose your language, language. Otherwise, things might not show up for you properly in the game right now. Remember, this is early beta. So pick your language, pick your server you want to play on. And then you're going to be able to click on one of the planets that's already in the game. I want you to click change because there will be some changes coming up on the 28th when this hits the Epic Store. For instance, you will no longer be able to play with these specific planets that are a little bit more well defined right now. So don't start with these because this is going to change. Instead, you want to go to quad and begin practicing with your seed planet. Now all of these are going to be a little bit different right now and they're also going to get reset on the 28th but again it doesn't matter because this is for you to start to learn this complex game that is really fun really addicting and is going to have rewards dropping for it as well very soon. So we're going to click our seed planet go to the skill tree and this is the primary reason we're making this video is to try to give some guidance here because this is definitely a bit overwhelming in the beginning. So straight out of the game if you are looking at the current elemental distribution of this seed planet, which direction do you think we should be going in with skills? And hopefully for you guys who are new, you get something similar to this, but I would recommend just following what we say in this video as best as you can, because it's going to get you off on the right foot. And again, you can go into the Discord for extra tips or pointers if you have different elemental distribution, but maybe we can just start building this planet out and start from there. Yeah, I guess the first thing you should keep in mind is like what each of the elements kind of represent and the type of gameplay style that they, they can provide. We can start with uh, Earth. It's all about tankiness, right? It's all about sustain. It's about control. When we go over to water, it's more, it, there's like some utility. There's there's like balance. There's mana regeneration, health regeneration. When we look at air, it's all about movement. You know, you want to be as quick as possible. And then lastly, there's fire. It's, uh, it's all about just full chaos, doing as much damage as you can. This planet's more focused on Earth, but I think we can take this planet in the direction of maybe one Earth skill and then putting the rest of the points on the Earth perks. Just so, pause for a have... second. When Sword says perks, he means that these squares ahead of the major skills are passive perks that you can put points into, and they're going to help out your avatar and apostles in unique ways throughout the game. Earth perks are super, super strong for apostles. Apostles are your teammates that fight with you on the battlefield. You don't directly control their movement, but you do control their skills. So I think Elijah is going to like show some of the apostles yeah, right now. Yeah, so here's a nice yes. little range of apostles. Exactly, exactly. And with these uh, these free-to-play planets, I think going for a mo more apostle-focused setup is probably stronger. If you're able to get your apostles tankier and beefier, and you can utilize them to the most on the battlefield, you'll have a, a really, really strong advantage over your opponent. Okay. So I guess so. what we can start off with is on the bottom right, 
P2 wild growth. This is probably one of the most staple earth perks. It just gives you passive health regeneration to your avatar and to your apostles. Okay. And then for the skill, I would actually recommend going for this earth skill, the rock and roll. What it does is it summons a boulder. It basically knocks back enemies. Uh, you can put one point in the core and put all three upgrades. Um, and just so you know, these upgrades here are different for each skill, but they all are very often really useful. And usually you want to add them to the skill that you've gotten. As you can see, like when the boulder detonates, the skill card returns to the top of the deck and the mana cost decreases by one. So this is something that you can sort of continually use. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So you're permanently kind of disrupting the battlefield, the flow of the gameplay. The reason why we're not upgrading this all the way up, if you can take a look at the yellow number in the description, that represents what is getting upgraded when you up when this, you put points into it. This plus 22.5%. So if we upgrade that, we can see that that's what's changing. Exactly. If we spend the points to upgrade it, we'll be basically spending points for the boulder to do more damage. But we're not actually using the boulder for the damage. We're using it for the utility and it's probably just not worth it when we can put those earth points into perks that and passives that enhance our apostles instead let's just finish up earth we can go to the next section for this one i would probably recommend the bottom left perk gives your apostles a shield so this one is more about like max hp for the apostles so actually this one might be a little bit better Okay. Uh, if you're so we could we could move those points into there and spend and the put remaining some here. on the, okay. we're gonna max up parts of the god p5 let's move on to air okay so for air avatars are quite slow in the beginning if you don't have any air points so i'd probably go with leveling up flow exactly what you're highlighting right now just so you have that base movement speed increase we can go to the next section i'd probably opt to upgrade zip sap orbs here maybe elijah you can explain yeah. the skill a little bit yeah it's really good i mean it's some circles around you and when the enemy gets hit three times by them they get stunned it's so valuable you can disrupt your opponent you'll see we'll play a game and you'll see exactly what it is you'll you'll notice a theme here with with some of the skills we're upgrading it's level one with three upgrades right we're not leveling up core yeah because as of now you don't really get this for the damage we'll just finish up the air points we got okay. a little bit left I'd, I'd actually probably put this in the third section the third section perk is probably my favorite oh yes this is like an amazing perk just like putting all the points into there it decreases your dash cooldown and then the more you move the more like a random card in your in your hand will get reduced by one which just gives you more firepower more defense more ability to play your hand so we actually have one more air point to spend i would put this in air poisoning because if you take a look at it, when you put one point in, all of a sudden, all of your damaging abilities or basic attacks have a 5% chance to inflict toxic on the opponent, which basically it decreases their, their defenses, their healing effectiveness. But not only does it do that, it also does damage over time. Perfect. Moving on to fire. We can go for uh, fire C1. I'd put this to level 5 with all th with all three upgrades, if possible. So the reason this time we're going to level 5, yeah, so you can see we're spending the points to make it do more damage. Yeah. Which is huge for the skills, because this is, this is our damage dealer, this is our AoE. But not only is it our AoE, if you go to one of the, the upgrades, it's a healing ability too on the right, right? So if you're hitting a huge clump of Apostles, enemies, you're going to heal for 25% of that damage dealt. So this thing does like, what, 1,000 damage to, to everything it hits? something like that if you hit five enemies that's just five thousand damage yeah. you're healing for 25 percent of that that's that's right? really important in amazing. this game you're gonna see that the damage mixed with healing perks is really important across the board whenever you have that as an option finally we got some passive water perks where do we throw those i'd put this one in the the bottom the first perk gathering magic it's just flat mana regeneration you do more damage when your apostles are dead it's just overall like an amazing perk Okay. And the second section, I think we should go for one on the bottom, P3. This is going to give us, you know, defense and res, basically making us take less damage. Still have some points left. I would put this in the life drain, water P4. This is just going to make us heal a little bit from the damage we're dealing with our avatar. And I see we have two water points left. Well, we don't really have much of an option here. So we'll just put one point in P2 and one point in P5. And then that's it. That's our skill tree for this planet with this distribution. But most importantly, hopefully it showed you some of the valuable skills that are quite good right now in the current meta that you can build around with your own planet. Now, of course, there's other directions you can go. Air is really powerful as well right now, but I didn't have that many air points. To start the game out, go see what planet you have. You can follow this roughly as a guide. And then finally, 
Hopefully, we're moving along to Apostles. Okay, so remember, we're going for a control build that's Apostle-focused. So we're going to definitely need some Apostles that are doing damage. I think we could go for like a double Rogue setup. What do you think? I like that. Yeah, I, I, was, I was leaning that way. Yeah, I think Card Shark, Killer Instinct. Now you see me. Maybe we just yeah, do that good. twice. That's also a pretty easy yeah. beginner yeah. one, I would say. It's like pretty straightforward. So these rogues do a lot of the work for you. They have some passive abilities that target the lowest enemies. They do a lot of damage, which is great. But really what you want to be super aware of is card shark. It sends the card that you just played to the top of your deck. So for boulder, you're never really going to need to follow it with a card shark. But if you want to change gears and play, let's just say like your fire damage ability and you want that back again, you can play card shark and it'll come back. Let's go ahead and jump into it, Sword. Yeah, let's do it. Should I just go ranked or should we fight? Let's fight. I have my own quad planet. I have right. prepared for this. All right, so good. So if you want to play against a friend, just host a private match. I'm going to call this room sword, all lowercase. I can hit start match and then he just needs to join that and we'll get to face off against each other. So in the formation phase, I'm not an expert here, but I know that you want the guardian up front and I generally do something like this with my rogues and put them sort of in the center. They're going to catch up to the guardian and I, I, they're a little bit defended, but nothing crazy. And then for a mage, maybe tuck him in the back here just a little further away as he's more squishy so you'll see here the apostles will auto attack but their abilities are going to show up in my inventory over here in the bottom right or in my card draw straight out of the gate we're just going to make sure that we're positioning ourselves well and here's the boulder so i think i want to try to line that up with as many apostles as i can of his that is so that's going to do its thing and I think it explodes in a second and then comes back to the top. Killer Instinct's just gonna be a nice little damage dealer for me. Uh, let's go ahead and fire this off again. Another Killer Instinct sounds good to me. And then here's our fire ability. We're gonna try to target as many of those as possible. I'm gonna Card Shark again. I can start controlling his avatar with some stun abilities. Let's get another fire in there. Let's play Prickly Personality uh, for some damage reflection. We got a little more control happening here, so we're gonna go ahead and line that up again. Uh, Magic Bomb is another really good damage ability. Let's go ahead and play our shield here. Awesome Aegis, Magic Bomb. And here's our Zip Zap Ors. I'm just gonna do this to kind of be annoying on his hero. You know, with air builds, you would come in here and get aggressive and start doing like more direct damage to their avatar. But this for me is just more utility. I'm just trying to slow him down. As you can see, let's get a little bit more on top of him here. Prickly, now nope. we want to fade that. He hit me again, that's unfortunate. He's getting redraws on his cannon, which is quite sad. We're just gonna need to go pretty heavy zip zap here. We're gonna need to heal up with our fire ability if we're gonna have a chance. And we gotta start dodging the cannon, honestly. We need another fire, we need another heal. Both of my apostles are alive, we fade again, that's good. My apostles are still in the game, so that's good. And you can see all my abilities are really low from how it worked when I was running around earlier. So now it's just cannon versus cannon basically. And I'm really trying to get something going. Let's get my shield on me here. And then as the circle starts to close, I can drop these fires on him. We can stun, we can get more of our control. Oh, we miss aim that one, that's okay. Let's get our fire down again. We avoid the stun. Fire in the center, Zip Zap Orbs. He's standing in the fire now. We're stunning with Zip Zap. Stunning, more stunning. Avoid the cannon. It's getting super, super close. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Avoid the cannon. We need another fire. I should have just been discarding for fire. Oh, he's out of the, he's out of it. He doesn't wanna step in the fire. Oh my God, I almost died. <laughs> Dude, that was That's close. Insane. If I if I landed that, if I landed that, that was that, that was over. Was close. All right, we got one more round here. I'm feeling confident though. I think I can play faster. I think in the end game, I didn't really show discarding very well in that game at all. The boulder I think becomes quite useless as the circle closes, so I just should be discarding that and searching for my fire ability. So that's probably one of the big things that I would change. Uh, let's just go right into this here with our boulder. And let's go with Actually, Killer something, Instinct. Actually, something you could, something you could try yeah. is uh, using the boulder to push me out of the end zone. If you can somehow like get a bunch of boulders in your hand, you can yeah. spam that, and I I just get stuck outside. Like you built, you literally just build a wall, and right. I can't I can't get through. Oh, he's got a priest, dude. What? You switched up on me. That's a bit of a mistake by me. I should have been, 
I really should have been focusing this priest down trying to kill it. It's okay though. And we're running into trouble here because we don't have a really great way to kill this priest. All right, there we go. Seat of fire. We're avoiding the cannon, which is good. We're gonna get another seat of firing because we really gotta get rid of this priest. There he goes, priest goes down, that's great. Let's get our shield going up here. I think we're still gonna be able to pull this off probably. Now I'm trying to target down his uh, his uh, avatar. We pushed him out, that was what he was talking about earlier. Push him out of the circle a little bit. We can get some stun action going probably. See, I need this circle to close even more, honestly. Oh, that one hurt, shit. All right, this is looking a little bit rough, but now we can go ahead and get our, oh, that's really good. Let's get another seat of fire. That's also super good. He's forced to run out. Let's get our cannon, our boulder. We can push him out with our boulder. And then we zip zap, we zip zap. He's out of the circle. He's in big trouble. We have an apostle still. I think we're good. I think we have a better build than him, honestly. Um, but either way, we're able to fade that pesky priest, luckily. Get the 2-0 on my man's sword. <laughs> GG. GG's, bro. GG's. Uh, you really, you really like, like, <laughs> I had the priest that, and, and I know you didn't notice, but then you, like, switched focus, and I think something with your build that I don't have is, like, that big, a, that big damage, right? I, I yeah. mean, my pre, my water dragon beam, it is a, a nice damage poke, but it's not meant to be, like, an AoE, whereas, like, the, the Seed of Fire, you just drop that on the priest, the card shark, bring it back, drop it down, and then yeah. all of your units jumping on top it's like it, exactly just, and the two rogues were able survival. to yeah exactly the two rogues were able to get in there and really help me out uh finish it. like guys by the way i hope that you learned from that that if the, if the opponent has a priest one or two of them that's got to be your priority you are basically always going to lose if you can't kill the priests so that was what i realized uh, halfway through that battle and uh shifted the priority but uh i really did enjoy making this video and sword thanks for coming on and shining so much knowledge here and helping people to you know get acclimated with aperon yeah no problem i mean i'm, I'm really happy to help and uh, i know that meditate is going to do some like really really amazing things um i mean you look at the leaderboard like 1437 getting in first he actually got to rank one actually the second day he started playing and then like it, it, it's just like amazing to see how, how much you guys are doing right now. Apron is at such an interesting time where you guys are still like pretty early. We haven't like launched a token. We're literally still in closed testing right now. We're a web three game, but you look at the gameplay, right? You look at the gameplay loop, the type of skill expression that exists. We're, we're catering to that casual competitive. Yeah. You know? And you guys are like one of, like one of the, the best skills out there. And having that competitive nature, you're going to be able to dominate this. You're going to be able to enjoy it. You're going to be playing it and you might even forget that you're playing a Web3 game. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. Because it's, 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 it's so good. Like, honestly, it really is. It's such a cool, fluid game that it's something that you feel like you would find in Web2. And the play style of it, micro intensive, almost a bit of an auto battler. So it's not too complicated. Like the, the units kind of take care of themselves, but you get to play the abilities. It's really, really well thought out. And I haven't played a game like this in Web3 yet. And I'm genuinely hooked. That's why I was able to finish top 20. If I wasn't having fun, if I wasn't enjoying the challenge of every single match, I wouldn't have gotten that high. Yeah, I, I'm really, really happy to hear that. The, I mean, the crazy thing is, right, you know, we, we set up the skill tree for you guys right just now, like an example, that's literally just one seed planet. You know, depending on what your seed planet is, you can set it up in any way you want. There are so many different ways to set up this planet. Okay, and this was supposed to be a bit of a guideline to skill trees, a starting point. But again, ask for help in Discord. There's more videos coming from me. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap it up here. Love you all. Sword, thanks again for coming on the channel. No problem. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.